It's not often that astronomers are the stars of big blockbuster movies. So for Don't Look Up, I was quite curious as to how they actually depicted astronomers and if it was at all close to how we actually are, myself being an astronomer, of course. So I watched the movie and thought it'd be good to talk about some of the things they did right and some of the things that weren't quite so right. But in general, this was a pretty good movie at depicting what astronomers do and how they behave. Um, so that was good. And the rest of the movie, I'll let you make your own mind up about that. But one quite funny thing, I thought, is that one of the stars of the movie, Jennifer Lawrence, was an astronomer using the Subaru telescope to look for supernova. And then with her discovery of the comet, she transitioned to doing more solar system based stuff. And I find this funny because that's kind of mirroring what I'm doing at the moment in my career. I've been working so far on exploding explosive supernova things all over the universe. But recently, as I've joined the University of Canterbury, I'm starting to switch more to doing solar system based science using telescopes here in New Zealand and other places in the world to try and understand the solar system objects. So I thought that was just a funny coincidence that I have some similarities with the main character. But one thing that is very funny, at least I thought, was the depiction of how astronomers observe. So you'd notice in the opening scenes of the movie that Jennifer Lawrence goes up and sits at a computer sitting right next to the telescope. And as she punches in the commands to do her observing run, the telescope then opens up and goes observing. Meanwhile, she's sitting right next to it, lights on all around inside the dome, and the telescope operates and takes some pretty nice pictures. Now those pictures that it was taking, or the, what they were showing us, were realistic. It's what you would get from a telescope like that. But if you had all of the lights on inside of the dome, you wouldn't get anything at all looking like that. All you'd get is a completely washed out image, completely filled up with light from inside the dome. You see, telescopes don't have a magical property to only collect light coming from space. They collect any light that's around them. So if you have big bright lights turned on inside of your telescope dome, they will collect that light and focus it down to your detector. And that, of course, just means that you've recorded a lot of interior light. So that was a bit strange, but, you know, it makes a much more exciting scene. In fact, a few weeks ago, I was observing with a 4 meter telescope that's based in Chile with the instrument DECCAM. Now, I'm not in Chile, I'm in New Zealand, but what we actually do when we use big telescopes is use the internet to do all of those connections and observations for us. So I sat here at this desk on a nice sunny Sunday afternoon, sending commands to this 4 meter telescope in Chile, and then it would go off and execute those commands um, while some observers on site in Chile made sure that the telescope didn't do anything quite bizarre and that could damage it. So this is what it actually looks like to observe with a big 4 meter telescope. In the movie they use Subaru, which is based on Mauna Kea in Hawaii. Um, and this is also a very large telescope. So since it's a very big telescope, they keep astronomers very, very far away from it. You don't want any random astronomer going up close to your telescope because they'll probably break it because we're very good at breaking things. So it's usually the technicians that get close to the telescopes and astronomers like myself stay very far away. So aside from the bit of dodgy observing at the start of the movie, there are lots of other subtle points which are really cool. So one thing is the whole premise of the movie that they discovered a comet that's coming towards the Earth. Now you might wonder, well, why was it a comet and not an asteroid? Well, there's some good actual thinking behind this because asteroids are kind of faint. They don't reflect too much light and sometimes they can be very hard to see. We have asteroid surveying telescopes here on Earth that look for potentially hazardous asteroids like the telescope system Atlas and they can only really give us a couple of days warning for a big impacting asteroid at best. But if you saw a comet, then that would be a different story. The structure and composition of a comet make it much easier to reflect light and for us to be able to see them. At the center of the comet, there will be a big chunky nucleus of material, kind of icy rocky stuff. And we've actually seen a nucleus up close with the Rosita mission. And as you can see from these images, the center of a comet or its nucleus 
is kind of like a strange mountain range, lots of rocks all cobbled together. So something like this could do a lot of damage if it went and impacted the Earth. But around the nucleus is this kind of haze of stuff. And this haze of stuff is made by volatile components kind of evaporating and sublimating off of the comet and making this shell around it. And this shell will then get blown by the solar winds. Particles streaming off the sun interact with this envelope around the nucleus and they'll blow it out into a big tail. So that's why we see the big lovely tails following comets. And there's actually two tails that follow a comet, the ion tail and you have the dust tail. And the difference between these two tails is just the mass of the stuff that's being blown off the comet. So every time we see this comet in Don't Look Up, it has these two tails, which I think is pretty neat, and they get those tails right. And the big plot point in this movie is that this comet is going to collide with the Earth, and it's about the same size as the comet that uh, drove the dinosaurs towards extinction around 65 million years ago. So is there a way that you could actually stop these extinction level impacts from happening? In the movie, they go about trying to stop the impact by launching up a whole barrage of nuclear missiles to try and knock the comet off of its course. And at the moment, that probably is the best option that we have. Just try and apply enough force to the comet to change its orbital parameters ever so slightly that you knock it just out of the way of impacting with the Earth. The amount of explosive material that you would need to do this would probably be an awful lot, and it might even be out of our capabilities with our current technology. There are some other ideas of how you might want to deflect comets and asteroids and these kinds of things, um, and the funniest one, and possibly the most practical one, is something called a gravity tractor where you take a very massive rocket and you put it as close as you can to the comet or asteroid, then the gravitational pull of your mass will slightly adjust the orbit of the comet or asteroid because gravity of the two things will pull them together and they'll slightly adjust each other's orbit. Now that one would be relatively straightforward to do. It wouldn't be nearly as explosive, but it would be very easy to do as long as you had a very long time to set up your gravity tractor, send it out and have it sit next to the object for long enough to change its orbit. Now in this case, they only had six months, which is actually quite a lot of warning. At best, with our current uh, telescopes and early warning systems, we might get a week at best. But with six months, you also don't have enough time to use a gravity tractor. So probably a lot of nuclear warheads would be the way to go. So this movie was pretty good, I think. Um, it portrayed astronomers in a fairly realistic light. Um, we're just a group of people who like to try and understand things, and if we find something that's quite bizarre, then we want to tell everyone about it. In the astronomy community, there is no secret that is kept for too long, because everyone is always too excited to share what they've discovered. In this case, the secret was um, politicized and became quite difficult to deal with, which is an unfortunate reality that we now face um, in today's world, where evidence can be politicized and groups of people might choose to ignore particular pieces of evidence because it doesn't agree with what the larger political view says. Now, this movie was obviously talking directly about uh, the potential danger of space hazards. But one thing I couldn't stop thinking about when I was watching this movie was climate change. And now we know that climate change is real and that human activity is driving it. There is no external factor like something from space which is driving climate change. And we know we're doing it, but we're not doing anything about it. And we are reaching a very difficult position with climate change. Like in the movie, they could look up in the sky and see that the comet was getting closer to them to see it was real. For us, we don't really have that so explicitly with climate change. Instead, what we do have is more frequent and disastrous weather events and changing systems that we didn't really see change before. So those are our warning calls for climate change being a very big problem for us. And still, in the movie, it maybe seemed a bit ridiculous that no one really did anything in the end and um, what played out, played out. 
But it's kind of exactly what's happening with climate change. It is a very big problem, definitely bigger than the threat of an asteroid or comet striking the Earth. So it's something that bothers me quite a bit, trying to work out what I could do to adjust or try and help with the efforts on mitigating climate change. But it is a very big problem. So I thought that this movie did a pretty good job at kind of putting together how this mistrust can be built and how it can be exploited and in general how our own humanity can kind of grind things to a halt for saving ourselves. Which is a bit of a grim outlook for the movie, um, but it is the truth that we live with today. And one final point, I thought they did a really good job at showing us how the scientific method or how important the scientific method is. Um, it was brought up quite a few times by Leonardo DiCaprio that the uh, ways that things were being done weren't strictly following the scientific method or that the discovery was vetted a few times by independent people. And this is the key principle of science is that you verify what you've discovered with independent people, independent experiments, independent tests, and if they draw the same conclusions, then you're in a pretty good place at saying what you've found, what you're suggesting, is probably the truth. If you have disagreement, then it's not going to work so well. So science might go a little bit slow sometimes, especially compared to, say, private industry. But the reason it goes slow is because there's this very heavily built-in checking mechanism to make sure that everything you're doing is right. And again, applying this to climate change, this pair of you checking mechanism has played out in every step of the way. Um, so if you question the science there, um, it's a very big body of human endeavor that has gone into creating all of this knowledge and understanding how the world is changing from our activities. So those were some of my thoughts on Don't Look Up. The science advisors for this movie did a fantastic job at getting the science portrayed in a believable way that's also exciting in this movie. And the astronomers as well that are played in this movie are like astronomers I meet in my day-to-day -day life. We are of course normal people and do normal things. And this movie's deeper message I found very interesting, and I hope that people watching this movie will be able to take away some lessons from it and try and think through the critical information that they receive, so that hopefully more people are prepared to try and solve the great crises that face us, which may be anything from comets coming towards the Earth to our own man-made disasters. But what were your thoughts on the movie? Let me know in the comments, and let me know if you think that the astronomers were like the astronomers you have ever encountered.